Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. We certainly give thanks to God for the grace of this day, what this beautiful day for our church and our diocese as we gather today, seeing so many familiar faces, it's so it's such a pleasure to be with you and to have a congregation for Mass, huh? So, good day. We're so grateful to God for the blessings of this day, for the ability to celebrate the Eucharist, to be nourished by God's own body and blood uh, under the patronage of the shrine of our Mary, our mother, on this, her queenship, the day of her queenship. So we're grateful to the Shrine staff for making this possible for us to gather here today, too. Likewise, we're grateful for the gift of these five men uh, who come today to lay down their lives in service of Christ and his church, bride. Uh, so we're grateful for you and for the gift you will be to our diocese as you take up your life of priestly service today. Let us begin by acknowledging our sins, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who made the mother of your son to be our mother and our queen, graciously grant that sustained by her intercession, we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter, sorry. a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask for a, a sign from the Lord, your God. Let it be as deep as the netherworld or as high as the sky. But Ahab answered, Ahaz answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Verbum Domini, Deo Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Praise you, servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens is his glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high, and looks upon the heavens and the earth below. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill he lifts up the poor to seat them with princes, with the princes of his own people. Blessed be the name of the Lord
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. For as in one body we have many parts, and all the parts do not have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us exercise them. If prophecy in proportion to the faith, if ministry in ministering, if one is a teacher in teaching, if one exhorts in exhortation, if one contributes in generosity, if one is over others with diligence, if one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Verbum Domini, Deo Ratia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Reverend Mr. David Edward Keyes. Sorry. 
Reverend Mr. Thomas William Lanza. Reverend Mr. Gustavo Andres Rodriguez Perez. Reverend Mr. John Freddy Triana Beltran. Reverend Mr. Gilbert Zachariah Starcher. Most uh, Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks be to God. St. John Vianney, the patron saint of priests, once said so beautifully about the Virgin Mary reflecting on the gospel that we just heard for this Mass. He said, Jesus Christ, after having given all he could give, that is to say, the merits of his toil, his sufferings, and bitter death, after having given us his adorable body and blood, to be food for our souls, willed also to give us the most precious thing he had left, which was his Holy Mother. Indeed, how appropriate that through strange circumstances and divine providence, we gather today on this feast of the Queenship of Mary, the day of the founding of our diocese, at this shrine dedicated to Our Lady, and still in the glow of having recently dedicated our diocese to Our Lady of Guadalupe. We gather in prayer to ordain our five brothers to the priesthood of Jesus Christ. David, Tom, Gustavo, Freddy, Gilbert, this is the largest ordination class, I was told last night, in over 25 years for our diocese. And certainly our new priests' lives and ministry will be specially and permanently marked by the gift of Mary, our mother, being ordained in these circumstances today. Our gospel today speaks beautifully about how every Christian person is entrusted with Mary as our mother. But today with this ordination, I'd like to look at this gift being given to one particular priest, St. John, the beloved disciple, who indeed represents all of us priests at the foot of the cross, receiving this dear and sacred gift from our Lord, his mother the last thing he had to give after the gift of himself. Every year when the new seminarians would come to Rome to study, when I was working over there at the North American College, right around this time of year, on the first Sunday that they were there, we would get up and go have mass at St. Peter's at the tomb of Peter. And then we would go to see Peter himself, the successor of Peter, the Holy Father. We would listen to his teaching of some sort and receive his blessing as the men started their formation there for the priesthood. 
One year, the Holy Father spoke so beautifully when we were there on exactly today's gospel. I remember it vividly. The beautiful link between Our Lady and the Holy Priesthood. And so I want to share with you some of his reflection from that day, as it was so powerful and certainly is an important message, especially for our five brothers being ordained today. When God decided it was time for his son to bodily come into our world, he needed the freely spoken yes of one of his creatures to do so, huh? He needed Mary to do so. We know that God never acts against our wills. One of the great blessings and frustrations in our life at times, huh? So God made himself dependent upon his own creature to accomplish his plan. God waited for Mary's yes to his proposal. There's, of course, a moving reflection on that in the breviary. If anyone who prays the Liturgy of the Hours knows St. Bernard, whose feast day we celebrated on Thursday of this week, speaks in a beautiful homily about how heaven, earth, even God himself was silent, waiting for Mary's yes, waiting for her response. Her yes becomes the door through which God entered the world and became man. And hence Mary becomes profoundly involved in the incarnation, which is our salvation. It is, it is the incarnation, Jesus becoming man, that is the beginning that prepared the ground for his later total gift of self, giving himself with great love on the cross, becoming bread for the life of the world. Hence, my brothers and sisters in Christ, sacrifice, priesthood, and the incarnation forever go together. And the Blessed Mother is at the heart of this mystery, beautifully immersed in it all. On the cross before dying, Jesus sees his mother beneath the cross, and he sees the beloved disciple, St. John. St. John certainly is a, a historical person, but he's so much more for us. He's a prefiguration of all beloved disciples, of all the people called by the Lord personally to be beloved disciples. And thus, particularly, he prefigures us priests. Jesus says to Mary, woman, behold your son, as he dies on the cross. He entrusts his mother to the care of the beloved disciple, St. John. But he also says to him, to the beloved disciple, behold your mother. The gospel tells us that from that hour on, St. John took his mother Mary into his home. Scripture and Greek scholars tell us that this is a weak translation that we have in our Bible. They tell us that a better, more rich translation would be St. John took Mary into his inner life. That is, into the depths of his being. This means Mary was not something external to St. John. She wasn't someone that he just paid attention to once in a while or spoke to once in a while. But she was with him in his entire existence and therefore, she entered into all that was part of his future apostolic and priestly ministry. Everything. She was there with him. It's a great mystery, huh? My brother's about to be ordained to the priesthood. 
this precious gift of Jesus on the cross, highlights the special relationship of motherhood that exists between Mary and you, beginning today. Take Mary into your inner being. Take her into all that is and will be your priestly ministry from this day forward. Like Mary, you are now committed to proclaiming, bearing witness to, and even giving Christ to the world, just like her. Because of your identification with and sacramental configuration to Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, you can and must feel that you are truly a chosen, beloved disciple, a beloved son of Mary. Take Mary into the depth of your being and into all your priestly work. Don't be satisfied with just praying to her at some point during the day, but also have her with you always as your model in proclaiming, bearing witness to, and giving her precious son to the world. Today, the Lord doesn't act against your will either. As you climbed your own Calvary Hill on this day to, prayer, to prayerfully lay down your life in service of Christ and his church, Jesus asks you today to turn it all over to him everything. Don't hold back. Give generously to them. Give them your energy, your desires, your wants, your hopes, your very lives. Even as he and the church await your yes, your ad sum, to begin your life of priestly service as his celibate, prayerful, and obedient priest going out to every corner of our diocese to be with those in need of Jesus. Brothers, don't hold any aspect of your life from him, but be men of deep prayer, disciplined prayer, and give him everything you have. He'll give back to you richly. You don't go alone and without help. You have the prayers and gratitude of the faithful, the clergy, those in consecrated life in this beautiful diocese of Metuchen. But even more so, always take our Blessed Mother with you as you take her into your being, the patroness of our diocese. She will protect you he will aid you in your priestly ministry. He will guide you. Just as she did her own son. You are being entrusted to the Blessed Mother by Jesus in a very unique way today and in a unique time. You go forth today full of enthusiasm, but also, of course, with your own human limitations. Rely on our Heavenly Mother to help you to be like her son as you strive to become the saints that he's called you to be and desires you to be and our good people need you to be. The Holy Spirit who acted in Christ is exactly the same spirit that will act in you today. He will assist you in being agents of his mercy and his compassion in a world and a diocese so in need of that. God bless you. God bless you and preserve you and know of my love and prayers for you too.
before we ordain our brothers to the priesthood, we're going to bless our oils. As you know, this year we couldn't have our chrism mass, one of the most uh, significant and beautiful liturgies of our year, where we recall the great gift of the priesthood, hence we thought it appropriate today that we do the other thing we do at the chrism mass, bless the oils, uh, which are used for ministry throughout the diocese. So uh, we'll do that, bless this now, and when I ask the priests for their promises, the new priests, I'm going to ask all of our priests of our diocese to renew their commitment to the priesthood too at the same time as we do at the chrism mass, whether they're here present or joining us virtually. Let us pray. O God, Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil and all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, Everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. O God, strength and protection of your people who have made the oil you created a sign of strength. Graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ, that they may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, author of the sacraments and bestower of life, we give thanks for your ineffable goodness, for in the ancient covenant you foreshadowed the mystery of sanctifying oil, and in the fullness of time you willed that it might shine forth uniquely in your beloved Son. And when your Son, our Lord, had saved the human race through the Paschal mystery, he filled your church with the Holy Spirit and wonderfully endowed her with heavenly gifts, so that through her, the work of salvation in the world might be brought to completion. From that time onward, through the sacred mystery of chrism, you have so bestowed the riches of your grace upon all humanity, that your sons and daughters born again in the cleansing waters of baptism are strengthened by the anointing of the Spirit and conform to your Christ. They share in his prophetic priestly and kingly office. Therefore, we beseech you, O Lord, by the power of your grace, this mingling of fragrance and oil may become for us a sacrament of your blessing. Pour out in abundance the gifts of the Holy Spirit on our brothers and sisters anointed with this oil, adorned with the splendors of holiness, the places and things signed by sacred oils. But above all, by the mystery of this oil, bring to completion the growth of your church until she reaches that measure of fullness 
in which you, resplendent with eternal light, will be in all with Christ in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. And my brother priests throughout the diocese will join as you five brothers make these promises today. First time. Dear brothers, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. You resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit, discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops and caring for the Lord's flock. You resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith. You resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people. You resolve to implore with God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing. You resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all. David, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Tom, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to completion. Gustavo, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Ready. Do you promise respect and obedience to the Dawson Bishop and your legitimate superior? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Gilbert, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these, his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Please kneel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. The Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint James, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, Pray for us, Saint Basil. Pray for us, Saint Martin. Pray for us, Saint Benedict. Pray for us, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us, Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us, Saint John Vianney. Pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint John Paul, pray for us. Saint John Newman, pray for us. O holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us. We from all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church, Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men, Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men, Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men, Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. 
Christ graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts through Christ our Lord.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earliest covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is apostle and high priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim. He made his apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission, you provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be, may they be worthy co-workers with our order. 
so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, O Lord, in imploring your mercy for your people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into one people and made perfect in your kingdom. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifices. Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifices to God. Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit in power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you celebrate what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, Imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we observe this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we bring you our offerings, O Lord, praying to be given strength by the humanity of Christ, who offered himself to you on the cross as the unblemished oblation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, on this memorial of the Queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the first to proclaim Christ even before the Apostles. Guided by the Holy Spirit, she hastened to bring her son to John, that he might be sanctified and filled with joy. It was the same spirit who made Peter and the other apostles fearless in preaching the gospel to all nations with its saving message of life in Christ. In our own day, the Blessed Virgin inspires by her example new preachers of the gospel, cherishes them with a mother's love, and sustains them by her unceasing prayer so that they may bring the good news of Christ the Savior to all the world. With all the saints and angels, we praise you forever. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope, and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a 
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given to us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly, kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of servant, your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of peace and rest, signs of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant then, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of rest, of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having received this heavenly sacrament, we humbly pray, O Lord, that we who reverently celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers at your eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Before the bishop gives his uh, um, final words, just a word of instruction. Since we're uh, in a different environment, uh, the priest will come down uh, when the conclusion of mass is, um, is finished and the procession has left. If you would please be seated. And then priests will come down into the congregation to bring Holy Communion to you. And then there are going to be five stations that are, uh, that are spaced out on the grounds. If you'd like to come to receive the first blessing of the priest, uh, you can um, do so in a healthy and socially distant way. Thank you. So some words of thanks. We have a lot to be grateful for today, as I said at the beginning of Mass, and uh, primarily we're grateful to God for the blessings that he's given us and the gift of his mother uh, to us. But we're grateful to our newly ordained priest uh, for the gift of themselves and for their families, uh, especially their parents and uh, immediate families, grandparents, aunts and uncles, all those uh, siblings, all those who have helped and supported them uh, in their formation and in their life. So uh, we give God thanks for for you and your families for sure, and thank you very much. I was grateful today for the gift of this shrine, uh, for hosting this event for us today. As I said at the beginning, David, is Dorothy, and Father Jim, and the whole staff here uh, that do so much all year long. It was a perfect venue for us today, and a great day uh, in honor of our mother as we ordained our brother priest, and as we celebrate the Eucharist. So we're, we're very grateful to them and all those who helped. Uh, we saw people help with parking, and the ushers, the young and we're helping with ushering people in, so we're grateful to all of you uh, for all you did. Our music ministry, uh, grateful our MCs, our worship office, uh, it's a lot to put together in a difficult way. So uh, they, they pulled it off, so we're grateful to them uh, for their goodness. Father Maurizio is our vocation director, and Father Pavich was the last vocation director who worked with these men uh, in their formation, along with uh, the seminaries. I know Monsignor Riley's here, I saw him, the rector at ICS, and Father um, Ed Masich from St. Vincent's, I know Father Edward, um, or Larry Turridum, is here from uh, St. Mary's. We're grateful to all of them for their good work. It's, uh, it's difficult times to be uh, in different seminary work, and uh, it's made more so difficult this past year huh, with the pandemic. So we're grateful for them for all their efforts to continue the formation of our, our men to get them ready for today. Um, our seminary board, the diocese, of course, we're grateful to them, too, uh, for their assistance. Our, good religious communities and those in consecrated life who are here with us. Um, and I also want to thank our brother priests uh, who are here today, especially um, for coming as we renewed our priestly vows. It's a challenging time to be a priest in our world, and it's uh, made more so uh, during the pandemic again. Uh, how do you sanctify? How do you offer the sacraments and pray with your people when you can't be with them? You know, how do you teach when you're not with them? How do you govern uh, when you have nobody there to help you in governing? or uh, people not coming and contributing to help govern and administer your parish. So it's been a truly challenging time for our priests, and I'm so proud of them, uh, what they have done uh, since it began in February and March, and the creative ways they've reached out uh, to continue to shepherd our good people. So I certainly want to thank them from the depths of my heart uh, for all the sacrifices that they made as they faced their own personal challenges, as we all did during this pandemic, on how to, how to, what to do and how to do it, and uh, keeping that priestly heart and the outreach for your people. It's meant a great deal to them, I know, because they write me and tell me, <laughs> and they tell me when I see them. So, uh, so I'm grateful to you. So thank you very much for all your efforts on behalf of myself and our people. We thank the priests of the diocese. Huh? So the five new priests are a great blessing for our, uh, for the Diocese of Metuchen and ones for the Oratory in Raritan, uh, who serve our diocese too. So we get five, really, huh? <laughs> in, the, in the day, and we're grateful to them. Uh, they have their new assignments, they're ready to go. Father Freddy is gonna continue as uh, Vice Rector of the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament in Raritan. Um, Father Gilbert is going to serve at St. Philip and James in uh, Phillipsburg. Father, <laughs> see if I keep them straight. 
Father Gustavo, you're going to St. Joseph's in North Plainfield, huh? Father David Keyes is going to go to St. Ambrose in Old Bridge. And Father Tom Lanz is going to Our Lady Perpetual Help in Bernardsville. And he's also, he's also going to teach part-time at Immaculata High School in Somerville. So he'll do both of those things. So we assure them our ongoing prayers and also for our seminarians. Uh, we have 25 seminarians studying for the diocese. Nine new ones this year entered, huh? They did. they did a great job serving today. Our college seminarians are on retreat, so they couldn't be here. Uh, we have uh, three men at St. Andrews in, uh, at Seton Hall. Uh, so they couldn't be with us today, but we told them we'd pray for them as they're on retreat and they're praying for us. So continue to pray for vocations, if you would, huh? to the priesthood and consecrated life. Uh, we're so blessed with our priests and uh, religious in this diocese, um, and we need more. Huh? We need more to continue the work uh, of the gospel uh, as priests, to continue to offer the sacraments in our parishes, continue to give the witness to consecrated life as our religious do so well. So please continue to pray for vocations. If you see someone that you think would make a good priest, tell them, or a good religious, tell them. Um, the number one reason people say they don't respond is because they're never asked when they do surveys. So ask them. And uh, you might be the Holy Spirit acting through you. And uh, we know our mother, Mary, will bless us. Today's a great day, a great Marian day for our diocese within a great Marian year for our diocese. So we know she'll bless us and hear us and respond uh, along to all of our prayers. So God bless you all. I uh, know I love you. I miss you. Uh, it's great to see so many of you today. And I uh, look forward to uh, when this is behind us, hopefully soon. Huh? We pray that for a quick uh, end to this pandemic and the scourge that's been afflicting our, our country and the world. Huh? We pray, asking our Mother Mary to intercede with us too for that cause. So God bless you, know my love and prayers, and please pray for me uh, that I might be the shepherd that you need and deserve at this time too. So God bless you. Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you steward, servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation. Amen. And may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Amen.